Alrighty, we're on our way to Canada. As soon as we get fuel, I got a fuel stop coming up. I'm gonna fill it up. And uh, we'll be headed towards Port Huron, Michigan. That's where we cross into Canada. And the Canadian side is Sarnia. on the Canadian border. Uh, we're in Port Huron, Michigan. Last exit before Canada. Port Huron, Michigan, and we'll be crossing into Sarnia, Ontario. Sarnia. I have to watch the signs here because uh, Trucks have to be in a certain lane, cars in a certain lane. Uh, first thing we have to do is pay a toll. <laughs> we have to cross a bridge. And uh, there's a toll on the US side. I think it's called Blue Water Bridge. And uh, I have to pay cash for this toll because we don't have a pass for this bridge. If I were crossing in Detroit, then uh, I have the Ambassador Bridge Pass, but I don't have to pay the toll there. But when you cross uh, in Port Huron, I have to pay. I don't know how much it is. They don't accept American Express, that's for sure. Bridge to Canada, eh? Uh, get out my money. And passport card I don't have to speak to US customs at all when I'm leaving the country so I just go right past the US customs is right in front of us that's the scanner up there drive through the scanner and it looks in your trailer somehow I don't know but I don't have to mess with them I just have to talk to Canadian border agents when I get to the other side of this bridge, and I don't know why all these people are pulled off to the right. Weird. Border crossings for commercial vehicles are always a mess. Nobody stays in the right lane that they're supposed to be in, and I don't know. It's always a mess. Crossing into Canada is actually not that bad. These cars over here off to the left, they have no idea what to do. They, they don't even know what's going on. They got out there and now they're coming back in. So some of these lanes must be closed. They have no clue. Crossing into Canada isn't that bad. Uh, Canadian border agents are actually quite nice. They are uh, very pleasant to deal with. Even when they, they might grill you, ask you a bunch of questions, but it's always, uh, it's always not, they're always nice about it. Uh, crossing from Canada back to the US is just horrible. US border agents are douchebags. Most of them, uh, I hate to say it, but they're just awful people. They're, they're horrible. They're rude. Um, Detroit's the worst. I've never crossed back into the U.S. in Port Huron. Uh, I actually crossed from Quebec into New York State. Uh, below Montreal. South of Montreal. And those U.S. Customs agents there were pretty cool. They... They weren't douchebags at all. But uh, everywhere else, crossing from at the Fort Erie Buffalo crossing back into the US, just complete douchebags. Detroit's the worst though. Uh, but crossing into Canada has always been pleasant so far. I'll probably jinx myself. 
this time, but. Something going on. There's a bunch of people standing around up here. I can't tell if it's police or border agents. This isn't really a border. I guess it is. The U.S. border is right over there. These might be U.S. agents out here for some reason. This is where we pay the toll to go over the bridge. I don't know what these guys are up to. They're looking for. Uh, what's the toll? Autos. Three dollars. U.S. four dollars. Canadian trucks. Three twenty-five U.S. per axle. Four fifty per axle. Canadian. No mixed funds. Good. Sixteen twenty-five U.S. twenty. All right, thanks, man. Yeah. You too. I don't know what these guys. What these guys are looking for here. A little weird. I've never seen them stand out here, staring us down before. Uh, U.S. Customs and Border Patrol. They're looking for something. So, bridge toll paid. Snuck by the U.S. Customs agents there. Now we're off. I'm only transiting Canada today. I'm not uh, delivering in Canada, so the uh, paperwork and such that I would have to go through is a little less. I'll need a uh, I'll need a uh, U.S. Canada Transit Manifest and uh, my bill of lading and that's it I didn't have to call or have anything faxed to a broker and I don't have to uh, schedule a specific time to cross when I'm transiting like I would if I were to be delivering in Canada. All I need is my passport card, uh, my bill of lading, my Transit Canada manifest. And what they're gonna do is, they're gonna stamp my Transit Canada manifest and they're going to apply a seal to my trailer. And they're going to put the seal on the manifest, the seal number. And then, uh, I'm not allowed to break that seal in Canada. If that seal gets broken in Canada, I won't be able to leave Canada until I go through some other big process, I'm sure. I don't know. I've never had a, I've never broken a seal in Canada when transiting. But, uh, when I get to the other border crossing, when I cross back into the US, the US customs agent is going to check that seal against my Transit Canada manifest paper, the stamp. And if the seal matches and he's happy, then he'll break the seal, take it, and I will continue on into the US. Now I have a sealed trailer already. It's sealed at the shipper and it's that seal is broken at the customer. That's, that seal doesn't make any difference in Canada. The one they're looking at is the one it's sealed with when I get here to this border. It has to be the same and unbroken seal when I leave the country. This is to ensure that I didn't smuggle anything in. Uh, didn't offload any freight because I didn't go through the same paperwork procedure that I would if I were unloading in Canada. When I have a stop in Canada or if I have to unload in Canada, 
I have to go through a broker and I have to fill out a different different paperwork and uh, that broker faxes me a uh, border crossing electronic manifest and that broker schedules a time a date and time when I'm going to hit each border crossing and I have to be there at or about that time you can't just willy-nilly cross the border anytime you want when you're delivering in Canada you have to be there at a, at a you tell them when you're gonna be there and you have to be there then if you're not gonna be there then then you have to call the broker and they have to inform the border that you're going to be late or not or whatnot and they have to resend you another electronic manifest I think I've never not made a time so I'm not sure how it works if you if you miss your border crossing time but whatever and loads going into Canada and coming out of Canada if you're if you're delivering in, a, in one or the other are more heavily scrutinized the paperwork and all that but when you just transit Canada I generally don't have a problem they don't really even look they ask me a couple of questions you know what am I hauling Do I plan on stay, you know, stay in the day or the night in Canada before I cross back? And today I won't be. I, I hope to make it across Ontario and into New York uh, before my day is up. So that's pretty much it. Down there off to the right is where I'm going to be stopping at the border agent getting my seal. If they decide they want to inspect me, they, they will. They'll just pull me off. They'll pull me back down here into this parking lot. And uh, they'll come out and they'll inspect me. They can go through whatever they want. I, you really have no rights when you're crossing a border. International border, I, I guess. They can go through the truck. They can go through the trailer. They can break the shipper seal and they'll reseal it. And I have to contact the shipper. I actually just contact my company and they do all that let them know that the seal's been broken and that the cargo was inspected and they can search you they can take you into the interrogation room whatever they want to do if they feel if they feel suspicious in any way Canadian Border Customs agents will carry on a conversation with you and you can you know you can chat back and forth like where are you born you know, where do you live now? Uh, uh, you know, do you like where you live now? And blah, blah, blah. They'll just carry on a conversation with the US border agents. They don't carry on conversations. They interrogate you from the second, from the second you roll up into eye contact with them until you leave. It's just an interrogation. It's all it is. There's, there's no friendly banter with U.S. Customs agents. I'm a little surprised on a Monday that this isn't backed up more. We've gotten down, down in the Canada side pretty quick. I guess the other thing about Canada is uh, the metric system. No more miles per hour. No more feet and miles. It goes to kilometers, meters, and kilometers an hour. Sarnia, Ontario. Those look like some nice condos over there. I wouldn't want to live at the border though, I don't think. It's always a mess here. There's down off to the right, you can't see it in the camera, but there's a mobile HCV. I don't know what that is, but it looks like a scanner. And 
they're making some people go through it. There's a dude hanging out down there. Huh, pretty cool. So I'm gonna take my passport card, uh, both copies of my bill of lading, and my manifest. And I filled out this manifest yesterday. And I'm gonna paper clip it all together. Everything organized. The more organized you are to cross, uh, the better they like it. You have everything together. Not fumbling around for paperwork. That gets you. That gets you pull, pulled in for inspection and uh, and interrogation. When you're fumbling about looking for stuff. Make sure everything's filled out properly. Uh, sometimes they ask for my driver's license. I normally don't give them my driver's license. Sometimes they ask for it, sometimes they don't. I'll give it to them if they ask. Oh, what lane do I want? I think I'm just gonna stay in the far right lane here. Lane two is closed. Although, that guy down there in the far right lane, he's being held up for some reason. What else? Always take your sunglasses off and crap like that. They'll tell you to remove them if you don't take them off. And it's just one other thing. You just don't want them to have to tell you to do anything. If you show up and, and you know everything, how to, you know, know what you're doing, then, uh, It just makes it that much nicer and they're just that much better with it. Yes ma'am, yes sir, no ma'am, no sir. That's pretty much how it works. Well, he finally got released. That took long enough. Oh, he got pulled in. That's not good. Getting pulled in there. Eh? Eason's transport. I think that's a New Jersey tag. It's either New Jersey or Florida. Uh, they both have the same color commercial tags. I'm betting it's Jersey. Eason. Yeah, he got pulled in, poor guy. The other thing is, uh, no fruit. You can't have any fruit when you cross into Canada or when you cross back to the US. And uh, another weird thing I, or another thing I think is weird is um, when you get up here to this window, you put the truck in neutral and you shut it off. You don't set your brakes. They hate it when you set your brakes at the window. I guess it's the noise, I don't know. But uh, never set your brakes at the window, but you have to shut your truck off. So you just roll up, put it in neutral, keep your foot on the brake, keep the brakes applied. You shut the truck off. You never set your brakes. That's on both sides, crossing both ways. U.S. border agents 
will flip out if you set your brakes at their window. They'll flip out if you don't turn the truck off either. If you sit there and the truck's idling, he'll just stare at you. He or she will just, they'll just stare at you. They won't even start talking. We're next. All right, and we're through. No issues. He had lots of questions. Lots of questions. How long are you gonna, how long is it gonna take you to get from here to, how long are you gonna be in Canada? I'm like, as long as it takes me to get to Buffalo. He's like, how long is that? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I, I don't have it programmed in to my GPS. Just ahead, keep left. On uh, the other border crossing, so I don't know how long it's gonna take to get there. So, he, weird questions this time. I, I didn't get asked all these weird questions last time. What's a driver from Florida? Doing picking up a load in Wisconsin and taking it to New York. I'm like, that's the strangest question. I'm a national driver. I drive all over. I'm an international driver. I drive all over the US and Canada. Just because I'm from Florida doesn't mean I can't go pick up a load in Wisconsin. But he was cool about it. He was very nice. He didn't, he wasn't being a douche. He was just asking strange questions. Speed limit out here, 70 kilometers. Forty-five miles an hour, seventy kilometers an hour. So we're now on the four oh two. Headed towards Toronto. I'm just looking at the sign, waiting for the speed limit to go up. There it is, 100 kilometers an hour. 70 kilometers an hour seemed really slow. I was like, all right, let's go. Uh, it's the law, large trucks must use speed limiters. Canada, the speed limiter law is 105 kilometers, which is what I'm governed at right about there. 402 Sarnia, Ontario, Canada. My next stop is gonna be for a Timmy's. I didn't tell the border agent that. He's like, are you gonna make any stops? And I said no, because I'm not really stopping. I don't know if he meant if I was gonna make any stops for the day or for the night or if I was just gonna make any stops in general, so I just said no, but in fact, I lied. I am stopping, I'm stopping at Timmy's to get a Timmy's coffee and some Timbits. We're gonna stay on the 402 until we get to